just playing around a little bit this morning with the Pinnacle program to see if I could record directly from the uh, a little camera on top of the screen here that I have. It has its own mic and uh, it's recording into the machine directly through Pinnacle actually. Uh, I've found a lot of uh, useful things in Pinnacle. It's a lot like the high-end uh, broadcast programs that we used to use with our Apple system back in uh, Media Pro and uh, and yet it's much less expensive, roughly $100 for the version I've got with all the library music and everything built in, uh, massive uh, abilities with uh, movement and keyframing and so on. It's a pretty cool kind of a setup. And so I'll uh, show you a couple little things here that uh, seem to work with it. One of the things I found is that when recording with this little uh, camera on top of the monitor, there's a delay in the audio by about a third of a second or so. And it's kind of a, an irritating thing. And I was able to get around it using Pinnacle and two layers of video and audio. Uh, I turned off the live video audio and turned uh, a track up right below it that was advanced about 11 frames. End result was an exact match in uh, sync, which is what you're actually hearing now with this voice. And uh, everything else is pretty intuitive. Uh, there's an awful lot of training for Pinnacle Online and a lot of uh, information about it on YouTube and so on. So you can check and see if it's compatible with the system that you've got. But uh, I like it a lot. I've been using it for far over a decade now. There are systems that uh, are much more uh, fancy. Uh, the Final Cut uh, Pro that we were using in uh, Media Pro was was uh, very high end. It also cost in the neighborhood of $10,000 for the system. This whole computer and software cost me a grand total of about $500. So you get what you pay for it, but <laughs> the end results can be pretty professional. It seems to take almost any kind of input. Once you've got it into a video file, it will absorb the video file, AVI, MPEGs, uh, all of those things are compatible with the system, and it pulls them all in. The little video that I put together with the art show for Marlia's opening last week, there's a clip in there of a few seconds of uh, one of the granddaughters dancing and stuff. It was shot by my daughter, who was using her smartphone. The way most people seem to misuse it, when they shoot, they hold it vertically. <laughs> well, TV sets are not vertical. If you turn it sideways, it would be wonderful horizontal image but that's not the way it was shot. The TV stations have found a way around this. They expand the uh, video itself and do a kind of a blurred out version to the left and right of the image and it kind of fills the screen and does a, a better job than nothing. So that's what uh, I did in the, in the video that I played with here. And uh, it's kind of a fun thing to be able to figure out how to get around some of the weird problems one nice thing about digital video, when it's shot with modern cameras and edited in modern equipment, uh, there's hardly ever any green skin or purple faces. It's uh, all pretty much in the ballpark because everything is done inside the computer instead of tweaking it the way I used to back in the old days. So, have a good time. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.